today. And to tee the topic up, I want to share a story. I want to share a story about the importance of safety training. Now, this goes back a number of years. I was running the largest contract metal finishing operation in North America, a quarter of a million square foot facility, 16 automated lines, two manual production departments, the largest industrial waste treatment system of any contract metal finisher in the world. Literally, we could treat 500 gallons a minute of waste effluent from that plant. Zinc plating, tin plating, phosphating, zinc nickel plating, some of the most cutting edge finishes in the world of plating that you can think of. So I was CEO of that company. And a lot of times I would go to bed thinking about the challenges of the day, thinking about orders that needed to get to customers, thinking about a quality issue that might've come up, a, a line downtime problem that we may have had in that plant. Fortunately, I had some great people on our team that were at the plant managing those kind of things. So for at least part of the evening, I could make my way home, spend some time with my family and get some sleep. Well, it was on one of those evenings that I went to bed at a normal time and I was sound asleep at about one in the morning when the telephone rang. Now it's never good at one in the morning when your telephone rings. You hope that it's someone dialing the wrong number. You hope that it isn't some family emergency or some situation that you weren't hoping to hear about. Well, in this case, it wasn't the wrong number. It was our plant manager, our third shift supervisor, as a matter of fact, from that manufacturing facility who was calling me from the hospital. Not because he was in the hospital, but here's what happened. One of our great maintenance people was working in that plant. They were working on a productivity issue related to machine downtime, and they were working above a caustic plant, a caustic cleaning solution. So a caustic cleaning solution in a gigantic tank that was heated up to, I'm going to say, probably 180 degrees, maybe even more. We would use this to pre-clean parts before they went into the plating process. Well, he was working above that plant and he slipped. He wasn't using the proper fall protection when he slipped off of the platform that he was standing on. Now, the good news was that he lived to tell the story. The bad news was that he had fallen about knee deep into a 180 degree caustic solution. They rushed him to the hospital. This is a really serious situation. Fortunately, he didn't go any further than knee deep. He caught himself before he fell in, or it would have been the end of his life. And fortunately, he caught himself, but he was rushed to the hospital, and he spent a good year outside of our plant recovering from that injury. Fortunately, the great doctors were able to fix the, the challenges that he had through skin grafts and, and other operations, and over time, he recovered. But I can tell you, as somebody who ran a metal finishing plant, ran a manufacturing plant for all those years, the last call you ever want to get in the middle of the night is one finding out that one of your precious team members, one of your important team members, somebody you consider a friend, whether they should have been using their fall protection or not, somebody didn't go home that day safely to their family. In the midst of all the things we deal with in manufacturing, of late orders and expedited orders and quality issues with customers and challenges with employees and environmental challenges and all of these other things that can happen in a metal finishing operation, in a manufacturing operation, those things are really, really important. But none of them, and I mean none of them, is as important as sending our people home at the end of every day safely to their families. I hope you never get a phone call like that in the middle of the night. I hope you never have to deal with something like that because it isn't any fun. Like I said, the good news is that young man ended up recovering, ended up coming back to work, and the story had a positive ending, but not without a tremendous amount of sacrifice on the part of him and on the part of his family. That's why this topic today is so important. When we talk about safety training, it's not about just doing what OSHA tells us to do. Yes, that's important. It's not about just going through the motions of making sure that our people are learning what they need to do in order to work safely. It is that we embed every single one of those ideas and thoughts in their psyche, that they are constantly thinking about how to work safely, constantly making sure that they're using the PPE that is available to them so that we make sure they go home in one piece. We have a great guest to talk about really cool innovations in safety training. In just a moment, I will be introducing and welcoming my friend, Ivan Manuel. Now, most of our presentations on Webinar Wednesday involved an, involve an outside guest. 
a teacher, an instructor, a curriculum coordinator, maybe an engineer who developed something really, really cool for technical education. Today, we're welcoming one of our own, one of our own team members. I haven't joined our team a couple months ago. He's had a really, really cool career already, though. He graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. That's about 10 minutes, if you will, from our world headquarters here in Mequon, Wisconsin. And after graduating, he went to work for Foxconn, the largest contract manufacturing operation on the planet, over a million employees worldwide. We were fortunate enough to have Ivan join our team, as I suggested just a couple short months ago, and he is doing amazing things. And some of those amazing things that he's doing, he is going to share with us here this afternoon on Webinar Wednesday. So Ivan, as we begin our time together today, I want to welcome you to the discussion. I want to thank you for being with us and welcome you to the team at ATS Lab Midwest. We're so excited to have you here. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for the great introduction. And um, this is a, a huge topic, and I can't wait to dive into some of the things that we found. I agree, and, and thank, thank you again for being here, Ivan. Uh, we're going to talk today um, about a really, really cool solution. And so I want to invite you to share with our audience what it is they're going to see and what it is that you're going to be sharing with them over the course of the next 20 minutes. Thank you, Matt. Um, I'm excited to get into um, the rest of the presentation. Before we do that, I'm going to start with uh, a video. And this video is going to show me navigating the compliance based entry scenario. Um, I've never done this before. And it took me from knowing very little about this to being able to pass with perfect score. So um, it's going to start with um, proper PPE. Um, that's the starting place for all of the tutorials and scenarios. And it's going to take you from that portion all the way through navigating um, the confined space entry. Inspect and select a five gas meter and radio from the locker and attach it to your belt. Then select an air blower, pick it up and carry it in your hand. Once you are ready, return to the screen and select start to begin your training. Approach the confined space, turn on the light switch, and read the permit by looking at it to proceed. Read the permit by looking at it to proceed. Walk over to confined space entrance and take your gas meter and hold it in your hand. Push the calibrate button on the with the other hand. Take the sensor of the gas meter and place it close to the confined space entrance to measure its atmosphere. When you're confident you've seen enough, you can place gas meter back to belt. Is it safe? Please select your answer below. On the screen, walk over to confined space entrance and take your gas meter and hold it in your hand. Push the calibrate button on the gas. Lower the sensor from the meter by letting it go and then grabbing the cable. Squeeze the index finger when touching the cable and move your hand down to lower it. When you're confident you've seen enough, you can place gas meter back to belt. Is it safe? Please select your answer below. Take the air blower and place it on the designated position next to confined space. To start the air blower, press the air in button. This will start ventilating the measure the atmosphere in the confined space as the Look at the gas meter display. Is it safe to enter the space? Good job. You're ready to move on. Ivan, that was really, really impressive to see you in those videos, you on the left-hand side, what you're experiencing on the right-hand side. You were actually hearing those instructions and experiencing that audio as well as we were going through that presentation. Is that correct? Yes. So um, that's a great point. You're being instructed step-by-step um, -step on the training um, process. So um, it's going to give you instruction. You're going to have to execute that instruction, and then it's going to give you a quiz to kind of test um, if you're understanding how you're advancing through the simulation. So clearly there are applications for extended reality way beyond what we traditionally think about. I think a lot of folks would say, this is for entertainment or it's for video games, or I know that my kids use it to play video games. Yeah. There's applications way beyond uh, what we see 
um, just in the video game or entertainment industry. And we can really use extended reality for some much more creative and uh, valuable things in many ways. So tell us a little bit about extended reality technology and convince our audience that it's not just video game technology. So uh, extended reality is a combination of augmented reality, um, AR, and virtual reality, which is VR. And these are combined to create hyper-realistic simulations. Um, they're paired with controllers, steering wheels, throttles, all of these things work together to give you a heightened sense of realism and put you in the scenario. Um, so it's very, um, it's very effective when trying to learn complicated um, processes. As you mentioned, most commonly people, when they hear virtual reality, they think of video games. Um, that's pretty much where it started. But we're seeing virtual reality used in a wide range of industries from entertainment, architecture, design, um, education and training, which we'll talk about a little bit more today, and uh, engineering as well as healthcare. There's many more industries. These are just to name a few. So I know we work with a number of really innovative employers that are trying to find more and more creative ways to perform workforce training, to accomplish other goals. Why in your belief, uh, Ivan, are innovative employers using extended reality as a tool to train their workforce? Extended reality, it's gonna allow employers to train more effectively. This technology is the perfect complement to any current safety training method, and it's not meant to replace them. This training in real life situations is gonna give employees a better understanding of why this is important and it makes them more inclined to follow the correct procedures. This is gonna reduce the cost of training. And most importantly, it's gonna reduce the risk of injury for employees during their work hours. That's what we're here for. And this is what this technology is all about. The curriculum is, is flexible. So it's gonna give employees the ability to train them on scenarios that are typically not, you're not able to train on because they're dangerous or they're expensive. And it's gonna allow the learner to master them. So right here, this is um, a case from PwC and they found that learners on virtual reality simulations learn four times faster than in the classroom. Um, they were almost four times more emotionally connected to the content and they were 275% more confident to apply the skills that they learned after the training Lastly, they were four times more focused on their e-learning. And this is because uh, they were completely immersed. There's no distractions. And it's, it's, a very, uh, it's a different type of training that people enjoy. So it makes them more connected to the content. Well, I love that overview and really helping our audience understand the differences between traditional training and training using extended reality and the, the benefits and how much real, more real it is in putting the learner immersed in a realistic situation, which I know you experienced as you were doing your demonstrations. And, and we're looking forward to seeing even more of those in just a minute. You know, we looked at the confined space entry uh, tool, Ivan, and, uh, and the uh, extended reality experience of a learner who is in that confined space entry environment. Is that the main competency that you're able to train using this platform or are there others? So that was just one of the industrial a suite that Free Range has created. So they have a collection of four modules, confined space entry, uh, learning the safe procedures to navigate these spaces, fall protection, um, learning to navigate the fall risk scenarios safely, uh, fire uh, suppression, which is going to, uh, you're gonna learn how to, uh, the initial stages of fire, fire suppression using the pass system and lockout tag out. So those are the four modules that Free Range covers in their industrial suite. So I know from my time, Ivan, in manufacturing that it's all about performance. It's what have you done? And I know some people might look at this technology and say it's a little bit of a gimmick or it's just you know some excuse for somebody to sell technology. I'm curious if you and your team have done any research on examples of this really working, of it actually you know being able to prove, to prove the performance, uh, being able to track the progress of a learner so that we know that this isn't just a fun toy for somebody to experience, but it really is generating benefits in terms of competencies that the learners have once they're complete. That's a big point. And so Intel actually did a collaboration where they enhanced their corporate training process with uh, VR. So between 2015 and 2017, 
they had over 24 electrical incidents um, and just as many near misses. And these incidents are considered to be some of the danger, most dangerous in the workplace. So this translated to over $1 million in cost, 90% uh, being caused by employees not following the proper procedure. So what did, what did they do and how did they, uh, what did they find? So they selected a group of employees that had all went through the traditional web-based training for uh, electrical safety multiple times and they've passed, they selected a group from their team and then they gave them the virtual uh, training and they found that 75% of these trainees, they struggled through this process. And the reason why they struggled was because most of them, they were unfamiliar um, with the pro proper sequence to execute these tasks even though they've passed this um, training multiple times, they didn't know the correct way to execute these tasks safely. So um, after implementing this new system for training, they were able to improve um, over a five-year time span. Um, their ROI improved over 300%, which is huge. Um, and that was just for the VR, the transition to VR. The, training, the trainees enjoyed the VR with over 94% wanting more training. So it's just not something that, you know, they want to rush through. They're actually enjoying the training and getting the most out of it, which is important. They were able to reduce the training cost of ownership and they increased training retention and motivation. So these are some major points that they were able to achieve just by transitioning to virtual reality. Well, and that's certainly impressive, Ivan. If you look at it, you know, again, my time in manufacturing, anytime you could get a 300% ROI in five years, that was something that you were going to definitely interest your people in, introduce and in, interest your, your administration or your C-suite in. That's something that's really, really impressive and, and really, really important. And, and to the point that you made early on, even more important is the fact that in addition to that ROI, we have employees that are working safely and they are at less risk of harm while they're at work. And we all agree that that is, of course, the absolute most important metric that we could measure to. So great example of how Intel has had tremendous success using extended reality in their training programs. You know, you, you look at this and you think about the life of a manufacturer and they, they know what they do. A metal fabricator knows metal fabrication. Uh, they know welding. A machining company knows CNC machining. They know G code and M codes and, and so on. Um, they may not know augmented reality, virtual reality, extended reality. And I know one of the questions people are going to have is even if this is really, really effective, if it takes somebody a tremendous amount of time to set it up, to make it work, uh, to understand how it works, that can be actually demotivating. So in your experience, and you've had tremendous experience with this product, is it hard to set up and is it hard to use? That's a great question. And I think that um, there's a lot of people that have problem with technology and they won't touch it. Um, as far as the setup process, it's going to prompt you directly through the process. Um, it's very simple. Setting up the headset initially takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it's just going to pretty much set the time zone, just basic things as if you're um, starting up a new computer for the first time. Um, after downloading the, uh, the scenarios and the free range um, application onto the headset, each tutorial is going to prompt you how to correctly use the, um, the controllers so you know the functions before you go into the, the scenario. So it's as far as the setup and the usage, it doesn't take much time at all to be able to get up to speed in order to accurately and efficiently go through these scenarios. So it's really quick for a customer, for anybody really to set this up and be using it almost immediately, it sounds like, which is, which is just amazing. And I think what's even more amazing is the experience of the learner. And what I want to do, Ivan, at this point in time is invite you to just go through a few more videos, share with our audience what it is that you experienced as you were going through this uh, this platform, as you were utilizing free range XR. And I know our audience would love to see that experience in much the same way you showed it early on. This next um, scenario is going to be uh, paired with the first one that you saw. So the first one we looked at was a tutorial. So that one was really getting you up to speed on the correct process step-by-step step on how to execute these scenarios. So this scenario is going to now um, put you in the field in a real situation and you have to figure out what to do and it's gonna give you a grade um, at the end. So this one's gonna be much different than what you saw earlier. Safely approach and investigate a possible gas leak in the confined space.
So here, here we can see me working through the confined space entry scenario. Um, as you can see, the process is the same, but the training module scenario is different. So things are located in different places. Um, it's not gonna give you any direction into how to navigate and advance through the scenario. Um, this is gonna test the learner's knowledge in the virtual environment. Um, and it's gonna pretty much assess their skill level, whether or not they understand the content and the steps required to complete. As I mentioned earlier, this wasn't shown in this video, but um, each scenario starts with the um, learner having to equip the proper PPE. So whatever that scenario requires, you won't even begin until you know what you need to safely operate these these different processes. Okay, so I'm gonna show one more scenario. And this scenario is unique because um, this one was done in a stationary position. So for people who don't are limited on space, you can still navigate through these scenarios without um, a lot of space. So this is a fall protection scenario and you'll see what I mean, um, that it doesn't require much safe to um, successfully go through the scenario. Get inside the cherry picker platform. Secure yourself and press the button to go up. Open the door by pressing the trigger button. Then proceed to the first destination marker. Secure, reach and pick up the construction item by pressing and holding your index finger. Don't go to the first destination circle to proceed. Reach for and pick up the four const Continue to secure the equipment. Continue to secure the equipment. Continue to secure the equipment. So that scenario, um, comparatively to the confined space, required a lot of uh, movement. Um, as far as being able to walk across these long banisters. Um, if you're not and you don't have the space, you can still do these scenarios. It would just advance you digitally to the next position and then you would follow the next steps from that process um, from there. So um, this gives you a good introduction to all the different things that you can do with this technology. And when it comes to training, there's so much that you can implement to your current system to make it more engaging make your employees operate more safely on a day-to-day -day basis and just improve your overall efficiency in the workplace. So with that, I'm going to pass it over back to you, Matt. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ivan. And you came to this with not really a lot of experience with lockout, tagout, with confined space entry, fire suppression, um, uh, fall protection, right? Do you feel like after going through those experiences that, that you would have the ability to work safely in a plant when it comes to those specific types of PPE and, and safety requirements? Yes, and when it comes to each scenario, each one is completely different. So being able to learn these variety of skills in such a short amount of time, is just it's just proof that it works. And I, I'm convinced that it works very effectively, especially in comparison to reading a brochure or watching a short video on how to do these process. So yes. Well, fantastic. Ivan, I wanna thank you. And I know our audience thanks you as well for the time that you spent putting those presentations together, letting them experience what Free Range XR is all about. And, and I know that you'll be hearing from tremendous numbers of people now that they had the opportunity to see that technology and wanting to learn more. 